Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about the 17 essential plant nutrients for plant growth. And this is our countdown to Christmas. We like to call planets. So if you didn't see the rest of the series, be sure to go check that out. It is literally 17 separate, well, at this point, I think it's only 14 separate videos, but still, it is it's going to be 17 separate videos each essential nutrient getting their own little video dedicated to themselves if you're watching today happy yule yes if you are a pagan person or you know, just a general weirdo out there you may or may not celebrate yule uh, for those of us who don't know what yule is it is the winter solstice it is the longest day of the year for us here in canada especially us northern folk that means today it gets dark very early and it stays dark for a very long time. There's not a lot of light happening here today. So right now it is uh, you know, the day before Yule and it's 5.16 and it's dark outside. So <laughs> I'm assuming tomorrow it's five o'clock. There's going to be no light. So burn your candles, shut your lights off and uh, maybe consider reading a book because that's actually how you do celebrate Yule for a lot of folks out there. So today's video, we're talking about manganese. Now manganese is a nutrient near and dear to my heart. And that is because it is actually one of the reasons why I initially even started this channel in general. So a little bit of a story time here. I was watching a plant video and someone was talking about manganese and they popped an element up on the screen and they showed the element magnesium. And that's when I realized that the greatest learning video platform out there, YouTube, is missing an actual plant or soil scientist in it. So that's kind of the reason why I started the videos was that video in particular. So today we're talking about manganese, which should not be mistaken for magnesium or molybdenum. They're two very different things. All three are very different things. All three have very different purposes. All three are needed in very different uh, quantities, you name it. So manganese is one of those micronutrients that is just under iron. So it's actually needed in higher quantities than a vast majority than the rest of the micronutrients out there, but is a micronutrient nonetheless, meaning over fertilization or toxicity is very, very possible. Now it is taken up through root interception. So that is the T-bone mechanism we spoke about where the tip of the root, the apical meristem of the root actually has to come in contact with the manganese ion specifically, and that is the mechanism in which it is uptaken. So that means manganese ions do not have any hydrogens attached, no oxygens attached. It is just the bare ion on its own, which brings us to the next point is it's brought from the earth's crust. It's brought from volcanic activity. Then obviously a minor cycle within the entire system on a smaller scale, which would involve the plant material uptaking, that product, the magnesium, manganese, molybdenum, all those, bringing it up into the plant, the leaves fall off and they are composted back onto the earth's surface. So if you do garden or if you do have house plants, you always wanna make sure you have a constant supply of some sort of organic material. Manganese is important for respiration, photosynthesis, and actually nitrogen assimilation. So something similar to what we do with molybdenum, but different in some respects. It also is really, really important when it comes to flower formation, pollen tube formation, pollen quality, all that sort of thing. So if you're looking for fruit production, whether that be in the form of a cucumber, a tomato, whatever the case is, you definitely are going to need manganese in a quantity that is going to be valuable or going to be enough for that plant. So manganese is a nutrient that is very easily tied up when the soil pH is out. So if we end up going above 6.5 range with pH, our manganese starts getting more and more uh, tied up within the soil itself, meaning it's not accessible for the plant. So if you can keep your soil pH around the 6.5 range, you are in a better state of affairs when it comes to manganese in particular. So when we have manganese or we have a deficiency in manganese, we have some really obvious signs that look really similar to iron and we'll get into why those deficiencies 
look so similar to iron a little bit later. So manganese uh, toxicity begins when the soil pH ends up going below 5.5 or manganese is in excess within the soil system. So typically, because it is a micronutrient, we can overdose very quickly with this nutrient, but typically the reason for it is the pH itself dropping below that 5.5. So all you container planter people out there, you house plant people, uh, people out there, you are at risk for this because you have a typically more acidic soil. Now this is because you're using a soilless medium, which is considered coconut coir or peat based uh, growing medium, which is heavily acidic in most cases. But then if we look at our nitrogen video and how nitrogen or excess nitrogen within our soil system ultimately affects the uh, pH of the soil. And if we look at our hydrogen video and why hydrogen matters, we can start to get a little bit of a sense as to how easily we can end up in the toxic range, especially when we're talking 5.5 to 6.5, we have a very narrow range in which it is optimal. Now toxicity is super obvious when it comes to manganese. It is like those crispy brown edges that we see. This is very typical of a toxic manganese scenario. So one really key feature of manganese in general is that it has a direct relationship with iron. It also has a relationship with things like zinc and copper, but more so iron, and that is because they actually compete for both sites on the soil particle and the root tip. That means they're in direct competition for plant uptake. And so because both of these are taken up by root inception, and we'll talk about iron in the next video, but nonetheless, they are competing directly. This means we have to have a ratio. We need to have balance. And I think I've driven this home pretty hard here in this entire series, but you never want to just dump on either organic material or conventional fertilizers because you can harm the balance. Now I do understand that soil testing and determining how much fertilizer you need is very difficult to do it's expensive to do but typically speaking if you just follow the directions on the actual fertilizer package that you have or the company that you're using they will generally give you instructions that are an under application for what you may need the last thing they want is a toxic soil or a soil that is unbalanced because then their product doesn't work and you're not going to recommend it am i right Yes, so they will actually tell you to under apply in a huge amount of circumstances. So just apply based on what the fertilizer packet is saying, both organic or inorganic values. If you guys do want a video on how to calculate how much your soil needs based off of a soil test, then please let me know. I will be more than happy to do an incredibly nerdy math intensive chemistry intensive video for you i've got no issues with that but generally speaking for most of us even for myself just follow the instructions on the back of the container now if you suspect um issues or if you want to send in a soil test obviously that's going to push you in a little bit better of a direction. But when we're talking about the manganese to iron ratio, we actually want it to be a two to one ratio. So we want two manganese ions per one iron ion, just to put that into perspective. That balance is key and it's going to lessen the potential for competition. Obviously pH comes into play here a little bit when it comes to what is available and what is not, but for the most part, what is in the soil solution bioavailable to the plant and ratios in which it is bioavailable is ultimately the key. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. That's all I have for manganese here today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever messed up manganese, magnesium, or molybdenum together at once. I'm sure I've done it in some videos where I, sometimes I ramble and I forget that I'm like actually teaching people stuff and then I'm going to edit and I'm like, oh God. And then sometimes I don't even catch it in the edit. I'm like, oh, that's, that's not right. That's not right. And then people will call me out on it and they're not wrong. I will right away admit, be like, yeah, no, I screwed that up. So I know I personally do that, but I, I probably did it in this video. <laughs> Put the timestamp down below if I screwed it up in this video. I probably did. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Have a happy winter solstice. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.